The assassination of President John F. Kennedy changed the course of history 60 years ago today. It became an especially dark day for the city of Dallas. And this morning, as we continue to remember the anniversary of the assassination, our Steve Pickett reports on the moniker, moniker City of Hate, which was attached to Dallas for decades. Something huge headline like this, you said, oh my God, it's true. I'm not dreaming, it's true. Quinn Matthews can take you back to every moment as if they happened yesterday. Kennedy came right up and he, he saw me. As Mrs. Kennedy and the crowd yelled, I'm the President of the United States. That November 1963 morning in Dallas would bring pure joy to a 13-year-old teenager waving passionately to a visiting president. That's Matthews, captured right there on film. I wanted him to know he was welcome here. I, I knew there were people who didn't welcome him to Dallas. A half century after the killing of John Kennedy, Quinn Matthews chronicled the worldwide criticism, the postcards, the letters, the prosecuting of a city labeled as co-conspirator in a president's death, the city of Dallas. His film is called City of Hate. I was aware that there was a, a lot of antipathy to Kennedy. There was a chill. I mean, it was like something bad is going to happen when Kennedy comes here. Now, no one thought he would be shot, but we thought something bad might happen. Dallas was the city of the most concern. Stephen Fagan is chief curator for the Sixth Floor Museum, Dallas's showcase of remembrance of the city's darkest day of the 20th century. Nothing must occur that is disrespectful or degrading to the President of the United States. An appeal for calm from Dallas's police chief to the citizens of Dallas. A racially segregated, politically conservative city, he says, drew concern, real concern, prior to JFK's arrival. So there was already this reputation that Dallas had unfairly received by a, a small but vocal minority of political extremists. And so when the Kennedy assassination happened, there was this collective, oh, Dallas, that's where things like this happen. In the name of God, what kind of city have we become? That in a sermon on a Sunday morning, two days after John F. Kennedy's assassination from one Dallas pastor. Where do we begin? We have our children. They were not born hating the president of the United States. Local moderate pastors challenged their church members on that Sunday to move away from extremism. Those messages are archived at SMU. I think these clergy wanted their congregations to be introspective, to be reflective about what kind of spirit, what kind of acrimony, what kind of animosity would generate the hatred that would result in the assassination of a president. There was a sense that Dallas was deeply and intimately bound up uh, with the Kennedy assassination. And that's a legacy that the city of Dallas struggled for decades to overcome and to put behind them. That was the definition of Dallas for 40 years, but it's not now. The killing of a president left this city wounded for years. Even today, Dealey Plaza attracts tourists. But Quinn Matthews believes 60 years later, a president can be remembered without ridicule and hate for the city where it happened. In Dallas, Steve Pickett, CBS News, Texas. A day that we'll all definitely remember for years and years to come. Yeah, um, it is one of those things that is certainly an identity mark for the city of Dallas and all of DFW and will always be. Yeah.